Just before we get started with today's video, I'd like to thank Brilliant for sponsoring it. To support today, I found out and learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash brainfood and sign up for free. So, in the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Joe T asks us, well, what causes that smell after rain? There are three primary sources of smells that occur after rain. The first, the clean smell, in particular after a heavy thunderstorm, is caused by ozone. Ozone, scientifically known as trioxygen due to the fact that it is comprised of three oxygen atoms, is notably pungent and has a very sharp smell that is often described as similar to the smell of chlorine. Some people can even smell ozone before the storm has even arrived. Before a thunderstorm rolls in, lightning can sometimes rip nitrogen and oxygen molecules in the environment to pieces. This can ultimately result in a small amount of ozone forming, which wind then carries down to ground level. Ultraviolet light in the atmosphere is also known to split O2 molecules, with the freed oxygen atom sometimes joining with oxygen molecules and having something of an ozone party. We'd also like to point out here that we really weren't using hyperbole when we described ozone as being pungent. The average human nose can pick out the distinctive smell of ozone at a concentration of 10 ppb, that's parts per billion. Despite its sometimes pleasant and clean smell, though, pure ozone is remarkably dangerous and in relatively high concentrations it can destroy the cells in your lungs. Luckily, the concentration of ozone before or after a thunderstorm is highly unlikely to do you any lasting harm. Moving on, another generally pleasant smell caused by rain is the deep and earthy smell which is strongest after a dry spell or a particularly heavy rainfall. This smell is the result of a bacteria that is commonly found in the soil. Certain microbes, particularly Streptomyces produce spores during overly dry periods. The longer the soil goes without rain, the more spores are usually present. This smell isn't actually caused by the spores themselves, though rather is caused by a chemical that's excreted during the production of the spores that's known as geosmin. As powerful a smell as ozone is, it has absolutely nothing on geosmin, which can be detected at concentrations of 5 ppt, that's parts per trillion. The sheer sensitivity of the human nose to this chemical is likely why in wooden areas in particular the smell is so powerful, and also why the smell of ozone is usually more noticeable in the city, where there is less of a chance of geosmin setting up camp in your nose. The third cause of after rain smell is largely due to oils secreted by various plants. Plants. These oils collect in the environment, and when it rains, certain chemicals that make up the oils get released into the atmosphere, usually along with geosmin, causing a familiar and inviting scent. All of the substances in the oils that contribute to the rain smell, they aren't yet fully known. One of the contributors may be 2-isopropyl 3-methyoxypyrazine. That was a mouthful, which was isolated by Nancy Gerber in the 1970s and has a very rain-like smell. Nancy was following up on research conducted in the 1960s by a pair of Australian chemists called Isabel Baer and R.G. Thomas. In 1964, Baer and Thomas set about discovering what caused the distinctive rain smell by drying clay and extracting and analyzing the oils that they found therein. They eventually stumbled upon an oily yellow material that smelled a bit like it smells after rain. Fun fact, it was Baer and Thomas who coined the term petrichor, the pleasant smell that accompanies the first rain after a dry smell, simply so they had a word for it. This word comes from the Greek petros, meaning stone, and icho, the golden blood of the gods in Greek mythology. When tested, it was found that the oily substance stunts the growth of some plants, leading researchers to surmise that its purpose is to stop plants from releasing seeds in non-ideal, overly dry conditions. All right, so today's video, lots of science in it, and if you'd like to take that knowledge further, the best way to do that is with brilliance who are the sponsor of today's video. Now, you've heard me talk about Brilliant before. They're a learning platform that focuses on active learning. This is where you're given a short bit of information on a scientific concept, and then you're asked to solve a problem based on that information. This combined is a super effective way to learn. Now, maybe you want to learn something about weather or ozone or thunderstorms. Well, all of these are covered in depth on Brilliant in their section called Out in Nature. So if you sign up, Go check that out. But that's just a small part of it all. They've also got lots of courses on everything from kind of basic physics of the everyday to way more advanced stuff like quantum objects. They've also got something called daily challenges. These are just five minutes a day that you can use to exercise your brain and learn something new. So far, thousands of people have learned how to use computer science to bake cheese biscuits or calculate the area of a snowflake. 
and much more than that. Each problem provides you the context and the framework that you need to tackle it. That means you can learn concepts by applying them. That's the active learning thing. This sort of short daily practice can lead you from curiosity to mastery in far less time than you would think. So go to brilliant.org forward slash brain food and finish your day a little smarter. The first 200 of you to do so will get 20% off the annual subscription and you'll be able to view all of the problems in the archives. Let's get into the bonus fact. Geosmin is what gives beets that distinctive earthy taste. It can also occasionally be the bane of winemakers when it infiltrates the grapes. Also, if you've ever drunk water that tasted muddy but was otherwise seemingly clean, there is likely some Geosmin in your water. Geosmin is also what can make fish taste muddy. To get around this problem, simply use a bit of vinegar or some other highly acidic substance on it, which will break down the Geosmin and take away that earthy taste. On a related note, besides producing Geosmin, we have Streptomyces to thank for producing approximately two-thirds of all natural antibiotics, including antibacterial, antiparasitic, and antifungal substances. It also produces immunosuppressants. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below. And do not forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this, seven days a week. How about that? Also, please do check out our fantastic sponsor, Brilliant. Link below. And as always, thank you for watching.